Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, I don't really know when this is this one is getting uploaded, uh, fun fact for you, I probably drove all the way to college to upload this video, thanks to my, my good friends at Xfinity, yep, called them up, uh, hey, for this next interactive thing, it's, it's a quest, you gotta go to college to get Wi-Fi that actually works, aw, oh, thanks Xfinity, super fun, yay. So yeah, for this video, uh, doing, doing something a little interesting here. So, my last video I talked about what was grinding my gears, and uh, is it some people like this. <laughs> Shout out to that one comment that was like, I don't even know why, but I love seeing this guy just rant about nonsense. Made my day seeing that comment, made my day. So, here we are. Uh, doing kind of another video where I'm also talking about utter nonsense, but man, I have found a gold mine. I don't even know how this came up, but for some reason, some video was recommended to me. It popped up in my recommendations when going on YouTube, and by God, is it a gold mine. <laughs> I don't know where this guy came from, but he is something else. So, the channel we're going to be looking at today. Practical Liberty, a.k.a. Henry Bingaman. No, that's, that's not a joke or anything. His name is literally Henry Bingaman. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. That literally sounds like a made-up character's name, like from a comedy sketch or something. Oh, it's uh, Balls McGee or something, you know. It's, it's Henry Bingaman. <laughs> so, who is Henry Bingaman? Oh boy, am I glad you asked, and is Henry so glad you asked too? It is his favorite topic to talk about, himself, Henry Bingaman. So let's read this description for this channel here, Practical Liberty. Uh, getting out of the machine. Yeah, okay, yeah. So here, I am Henry Bingaman. By God, the best name ever. <laughs> the creator and host of Practical Liberty. My promotions have broken many company records, including the most profitable prom promotion in the history of 20 mm plus dollar health company and the most front end sales in a single day in any Agora division. In total, I've sold over $300 million worth of products for my clients. Wow. That is quite something. That is quite quite a description, Henry Bingaman. Quite a description. Quite a description. So yes, clearly this guy is, you know, God's gift to man. He is he is putting the work out there. I mean, this, this dude is breaking records, $300 million worth products. Oh, yeah. By God, by God. I know what you're thinking about. Who is this guy? How come I've never heard of him before? I, I was thinking the same thing. I mean, this guy clearly has to have millions of subscribers, millions of people listening to him. This guy is clearly... The most wise man on the planet Earth. Uh, he has 300 subscribers. Uh, you know, that may seem a little a little small for somebody doing, you know, the credit he's doing. I mean, he said $300 million worth of products for his clients. I mean... You think he'd probably have, like... 300 million subscribers then, but, but, you know, you gotta start somewhere, so let's see, 
However, it's not my sales records or the millions I've made <laughs> that are my proudest accomplishment. It's being born into an inner city, low income family and breaking the predetermined script for my life to achieve true freedom. By God. If you guys didn't know Henry Bingaman, dude, he had it tough, man. He had to grow up in a basement, and he broke out of said basement and broke records, made millions, and had a whole 300 subscribers on YouTube. I mean, if there was ever a guy to look up to, if there was ever a guy to look up to, it was Henry Bingaman. And I mean, nowadays he has his own website. What is that website called? So glad you asked. Of course, HenryBingaman.com. What else would you title the... What else would you title the website? What else would it be called? There is no better option than HenryBingaman.com. Who is the greatest person in the world? Henry Bingaman. Henry fucking Bingaman. So yeah, that's some fun. Here's the video I saw, and this is going to be the video we're talking about. So, if you just scroll through his channel here. Oh shit, I'm... while we were looking at this channel, he got a whole nother subscriber. He got another subscriber. He's got 301 now. Oh shit. <laughs> that wasn't planned. How did, how did that happen on screen? That's crazy. All right. So yeah, let's just uh, search through some of this stuff. Uh, who can you trust? Uh, uh, I mean, if there was one guy you could trust, it was Henry Bingaman. Henry Bingaman can always be trusted. Who else can be trusted? Absolutely no one. Absolutely no one. Everyone else is a lizard person or whatever the conspiracy theory is today. Henry Bingaman knows the truth. He will set you free. Uh, so yes, crypto, uh, he's a crypto bro, of course, of course. I mean, if there was a guy who understood business, it was Henry Bingaman, and he's telling you just how to do the crypto stuff correctly. Um, uh, dismissing all the propaganda, there's so much propaganda in the world, let's, let's make sure that we don't fall for the propaganda, that's right. Here we don't fall for propaganda, we just listen to Henry Bingaman and he'll tell us the truth. He would never sell us propaganda, he only sells us the damn truth. <laughs> How to survive and thrive during the end of the American Empire. The American Empire. If you guys didn't know, uh, it was actually America who built the Death Star from Star Wars. You know, it, it was actually America who was an empire the whole time. And uh, now that America is not an empire anymore, I mean, the world is clearly going to crumble. And who is going to save us? Henry motherfucking Binga, man. That's who. That's who. This guy has... Uh, this guy is definitely taking notes from me when it comes to thumbnails, you know, just do the same shit over and over again with slight changes. I'm flattered, Henry Bingaman, I'm flattered that you took notes from me. And that's right, that's right, right down here, uh, democracy can't save you. If you think democracy is the key to saving you, you are wrong. And by God, yeah, seven months ago is when he started. By God, Henry Bingaman, I am so flattered. It seems as if you just started right when I did. You know, you really... Henry Bingaman is is quite something else. Huh. So, yeah, before we get into his video, we're going to do that in a second here. But uh, let me just warn you right now. I'm going to be going off on this guy. I'm going to be goofing around. You saw his channel. You saw the kind of stuff that he talks about. And I'm going to be goofing on that stuff. Uh, if you have a problem with that, 
Uh, you can suck my balls. Man, last time I saw a guy like Henry Bingaman, he molested a woman and then fled the country. And then started talking about the color of Bugattis or something. I, I, I don't remember. What was that guy's name again? I don't remember. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, pretty similar to Henry Bingaman. But don't worry, now that that guy has been cancelled on everything and moved out of the country and whatnot to, to literally hide from the police after he molested a woman. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Henry Bingaman is now here to take his place. Henry Bingaman probably has an entire rainbow of Bugattis, if you guys are wondering. This guy, this guy is the Chad. He is the Chad of all Chads. Let's see what he has to say. Alright, so let's see here. Let's check out this video. Money can't buy you happiness and other myths about money. Alright, Henry Bingaman, let's see what you got to say. Very curious about your takes on money and whatnot. Let's let's see what you gotta what you gotta say about this. And I mean, uh, already just looking at this right now, I gotta say it, Henry Bingaman, you are killing it, man. You are killing it. I mean, I know you you have, are probably worth millions and millions of dollars going off of what you said in that description and everything, you know. You're you're probably the most wealthy man on Earth, and, and in fact, maybe you might even be the one colonizing Mars right now. I, I don't even know. And, and uh, I gotta say, this camera quality, you know, it's it's about on par with my stuff, you know. I, I would imagine you do better, but no, no, you're just that smart with your money that... You don't even you don't even spend money on a better camera because you got better things to do with your money. That's right, Henry Binga man. You put it you show the people, you show the people, you do it. Alright, let's see it, Henry Binga man. Practical Liberty, my name is Henry Bingaman. Well, this is the first episode back since I took a week off for Thanksgiving. And it's the second time I'm recording this particular podcast. My intention was to release this on Friday as always. But after recording the whole thing, I discovered that there was some kind of malfunction with my microphone. The entire recording was just a bunch of burring robot noises, so that was extremely frustrating. I'm actually not even sure how I fixed it, to be honest. I just cleared a bunch of space in my computer and updated all of my software, including my operating system, which took forever. And as you can hear, I hope, it appears to be working again. Uh, I'm glad at least... Wow, Henry Bingaman. I gotta give it to you, man. I gotta give it to you. <laughs> Malfunctioning, uh, Mike. I mean, I, I get it, man. Shit, shit happens. Shit happens sometimes. But, uh, yeah, as, as you can see here, Henry Binga, man, you know, he's, he's doing good with his money. I mean, his mic may not work all the time, but he, he definitely is just drowning in, in millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, man. Henry Binga, man. This, this guy should run for president. He might be the greatest man that ever lived. Those are security, wealth, awareness, and network. But that second cornerstone, wealth, the name is a little bit misleading. Uh, wealth invokes this idea of being rich. It would probably be more accurate if I said security, money, awareness, and network. It's just that SWAN is a much better acronym than S-MAN. I guess I could call it MANS, but then that feels misogynistic. <laughs> I don't know. If you can think of a uh, better way of arranging those letters, let me know. So first, what is money? Wow, I, I'm very, I'm very honored, Henry Bingaman. I mean, I thought you had all the answers here, and you're asking me to rearrange letters for you, man. I mean, I mean, shit, Henry. I, I took notes on your stuff. I, I, I was like that one guy on your website, man. I took four pages of notes. I'll, I gotta show you guys the website at the end of this video. Um, yeah, I'll show you that later on. <laughs> I took notes, Henry, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, if I'm gonna rearrange letters for you, I, I am gonna need to see see some payment for that shit, man. I mean, I, I don't know, Henry, I don't know. Get binga man, binga man. I think the means of payment distinction would have to do with debt, but uh, I'm not an economist. I just play one on the internet. <laughs> anyway. There's probably no other invention that has done more to advance human civilization than money. Uh, maybe writing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Henry Binga man, let's uh let's uh slow it down there, Chad. So you're telling me 
You're telling me you're you're not even an economist, you just say a bunch of shit on the internet. I mean what well, after everything you've said in your description and on your website and everything, you're you're not even like a professional or anything? What? Why do you present yourself as such a professional then? Oh boy. Bingo man, you are definitely sending some mixed signals here, bro. Also, money is an, an invention that helped civilization more than anything else that came before it, other than writing. Oh my god, Henry. <laughs> so, all other inventions. Like, just just think about that for a second. So, the wheel, automobiles, planes, like, any of that, you know, just medical fields, any any of that, like, no, no, none, none of that is anything compared to money. I mean, maybe there can be an argument made for that, but that just, that just right there shows you really the mindset of uh, Henry Bingaman here. Maybe Binga Man just needs a Binga woman in his life, am I right? Around the concept of money. For today's podcast, I want to take a crack at dispelling at least a few of those. And myth number one, the myth about money that I hear the most, is that money can't buy you happiness. So if you were to take that at face value, what you're saying is that the poorest people are the happiest people? Like zero dollars is the ideal amount of money for happiness? <laughs> now, Henry Binga Man. I thought I thought you were a genius. What 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 are you talking about here, bud? Uh, I think you need to go back to school and learn how language works again. The phrase "money can't buy you happiness" doesn't imply that poor people are the happiest. It's just saying that money itself cannot bring happiness. It isn't the key to happiness. It's not saying that you have to be poor to be happy. It's just saying that you can have a ton of money and still not be happy. This is very easy stuff that like anyone can understand. Henry, maybe need maybe you need to take some notes, man. I know that's not what anyone means when they say that. The most common response when I see someone pushed on this is to say, you know, studies have proven that happiness tops out at $75,000 a year. You know, making more than that doesn't make you any happier. First of all, if you know anything about the replication crisis in social sciences, you should immediately question anyone who says studies have proven. No That's right. Don't believe any studies. Don't, don't trust any studies. They're all fake. They're all run by, I, I don't know, the Illuminati or some shit. Only trust Henry Binga man. He is the only one who has the facts here. Studies, all studies are fake except the ones run by Henry Binga man. You've heard it here, folks, people. Thing is proven as a cold hard fact in the soft sciences. You can prove things in mathematics. You can get really, really close to proving things as absolute truths anyway in physics. Although quantum mechanics muddies the waters there. Uh, and you can make some discoveries in biology or chemistry that you know, they may not be 100% understood, but they're very useful. Yeah, I'm thinking of things like medicines. You, know, you could have some medicines that make eight people better, has no effect on one person, and makes one person worse. But a social science claiming to have discovered a truth? I mean, that's just a... That's right, you heard it here as well. Henry Bingaman knows that medicine is actually not real. It's, it's, it's not real. It's all fake. They lied about it. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, boy. Henry Binga man, your composure's about as gone as your hair, bro. Like, what happened? You have lost your marbles, clearly. This dude is talking utter nonsense. The truth is, money can buy you happiness. But too many people use it to buy things that make them miserable. And I'm not immune to this. I bought things that stressed me out and made me less happy. But the major problem is the whole keeping up with the Joneses phenomenon. Okay, so apparently money can buy you happiness is what uh the man himself, Henry Bingaman, is saying. 
I mean, I think this is more of a nuanced thing, and, you know, there's more discussion to be had rather than just, yep, it can, it can be bought, no question of it. Um, but, I mean, then again, uh, this is Henry Bingaman talking. I mean, clearly he has all the answers. Why would I ever question him? Uh, I just think, you know, like, definitely, yeah, having money is going to help out people who are struggling financially. If you're not struggling financially, you're obviously going to be happier than somebody who is struggling financially. But at the same time, you know, is money really the thing that makes you happy in life? Or is it going to be other things like connections with the people around you and stuff like that? Feeling purpose in life? I think that's all going to make you happier than money, but, you know, hey, uh, Henry Bingaman's talking, so how about I shut my mouth, damn peasant? ...on the street goes out and buys something even fancier. We can all recognize that, you know, logically, this is stupid. But you have to be able to see it to stop yourself from doing it. Yeah. A few years ago, when I was flying around a lot more than I am these days, uh, I was speaking at a conference, and I was out at the uh, dinner talking to another one of the speakers, and he mentioned that he flew in on a private jet. Now, this dude is a big deal, but he's not that big of a deal. So I asked, you know, how, how can you afford to do that? And he told me about these uh, private jet memberships. So there, there are a bunch of different membership programs, but they all work basically the same way. Where you don't own the jet, but you buy a car that has a certain amount of miles or hours. You know, I don't, I don't remember all the details, but I think he was spending something like $80,000 a year to fly private. So as soon as I got home from that event, I started looking into getting one of those, you know, membership cards. Now, I think I spent around 15 grand on first class flights that year, and I was traveling a lot. But I seriously considered sending $65,000 more than that just to keep up with the Joneses. And I. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. There is a lot to unpack with what just happened there. Okay. <clears throat> so that right there, that whole bit there, that is a good sum up of Henry Bingaman all in one there. So if you notice there. Uh, he was talking about how he was flying around, he was going to talks, he was doing this. So yes, once again, Henry Bingaman is talking about how wonderful Henry Bingaman is. Yes, he's going to talks, everyone wants to hear what he has to say. He's got a whole 300 subscribers, oh I'm sorry, 301 subscribers on YouTube. You know, clearly this is one of the most genius men in, in the world. You have to listen to everything he says. So he was talking about that, he did that, number one, and then after that he talked about how he was flying around, uh, and he talked to a friend who takes private jets everywhere, and I do find it interesting, Henry Bingaman is already saying like, okay, this dude's a big deal, but he ain't that big of a deal. Like, wow, Henry, I'm, I'm so shocked that you're calling out somebody else for being a big deal but not that big of a deal and yet you have the description and website that you have like wow man look in the fucking mirror bro come on <laughs> so yeah he asks his friend and his friend reveals that like they have a card membership for private jets and then Henry Bingaman says he looked into getting that himself because he's tired of just flying first class everywhere. So, what the fuck, man? You're flying first class everywhere? What? And he also said he flew a lot. Like, what? Does anyone acknowledge, like, how crazy this dude is speaking right now? Like, did, did you guys notice all these subtle details here? So, wait a minute. You're telling me you, you're flying all over the place and you're flying first class and you can afford all that stuff? Like, buddy. You're, you're trying to tell us to not waste money on shit that doesn't matter, but then there you are flying first class everywhere and... And in this story, not only did you, you know, fly around first class everywhere, you were unsatisfied with it and almost spent more money to get private jet flights. 
Henry Binga man, I think you might be the worst fucking person ever to go to when it comes to financial stability. You're out here being spending money on nonsense left and right. Dude, what? This dude has has lost his mind. Understand that money is a store of value. The money is the abstraction for the value. So the problem with the public school system, you know, besides the corruption, child abuse, socialism, uh, the problem is that it teaches kids that their time. Okay, this one's big enough to the point where I'm pausing here and I'm looking at the camera. Huh? Okay, I was already saying this dude's giving me weird vibes and then here he goes on a tangent about how public schools are flawed because of socialism. Huh? Yeah, so he said child abuse, corruption, and socialism. Uh, I don't know about all that stuff, man. I don't know. I think you're talking a lot of stuff. I, I think you're kind of talking shit. Um, could there be child abuse? Like, I mean, I don't really know about, like, physical abuse. When it comes to schools, in, in my case, I, I have never experienced that. Um, I know that there's been teachers that have inappropriate relationships with students. That can happen from time to time. And yes, that could be a problem and get into that. But it is not a constant thing with schools. It can happen, but... The second anyone knows about that shit, that teacher is going to jail instantly. It's not like a thing that they allow to happen. The next... Yeah, and then you talk about socialism. I mean... Okay, like I said, I was already getting Andrew Tate vibes off of this guy, but by God, alright, here we go with uh, socialism bad, socialism taking over everything, and socialism bad. Buddy, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, I live in America... I'm pretty sure you live in America too. We learn about like how Christopher Columbus is great, George Washington and the Founding Fathers were great, and certain things in history are brought up but so many things are like sweeped under the rug and not really portrayed the best way. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Oh it's socialism, it's socialism. Like what are you talking about dude? School never made me think like, yeah, socialism is the key. School made it clear to me that, like, communism failed everywhere and whatnot. It was school above anything else that made it clear that that was a thing. What are you talking about, dude? I think you need to go back to school and figure out what you're even talking about. I mean, yeah, like, what? Yeah, they made it clear that communism failed. I don't think it made you socialist. And also, I don't understand why you're so hateful towards socialism in the first place. I mean, I get, yeah, communism failed and all that. I get that, but at the same time, socialistic ideas in democratic areas can sometimes be actually pretty helpful, pretty beneficial. Did you read, did you study about the Gilded Age? Did you hear about that book, The Jungle? Hear about that part, you know? 
when FDR stepped in and regulated certain systems, you know, making sure that factory workers were safe, that people weren't just dying constantly, and made sure that, you know, certain companies weren't being assholes, you know, the antitrust stuff. Did you read about any of that? Did you hear about any of that stuff? Those were socialistic ideas in a de democratic republic, but, you know, it actually helped people. But, you know, socialism is evil, it's the devil, it's coming to steal your Bible, and it's gonna turn the frogs gay in the water, or whatever the fuck these, these people are talking about these days. Go back to school, man. I think you need to go back. Told you to do it. It's the factory model, right? In a factory model, it's actually counterproductive for one worker to add more value than another worker. So, as a quick aside on this, I actually worked in a factory one summer during college. Uh, it was a company that made styrofoam containers. My job was to load the orders into the truck. So a big tractor trailer backs into the cargo bay. Forklift driver would go bring all the pallets with the different types of containers, and they drop it behind that truck. And then my job was to load them into the truck. You know, after getting yelled at a, a couple dozen times in the first week or two, I learned not to work too quickly. If you're on your second truck when everyone else is only halfway through their first, you've made them look bad. You know, even the warehouse manager didn't want me to work too fast. Just think of it from his view. If, if I'm loading two extra trailers a week than everybody else, and then I leave at the end of the summer, it, it looks like his performance dropped by two trailers a week, and he has to find a way to explain that. Anyway, it wasn't fun work, but I actually really liked the people I was working with. Uh, the work seemed... Okay, what the fuck did you just say, dude? All right. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this clip right here, like, this is why I wanted to make this video in the first place. Yeah, I just, before I knew anything about this guy, I just watched this video, and this bit right here, oh my god, I had to talk about this. So, I kid you not, after, like, after everything we've seen with this guy, we, we already know, this, this dude is, is fucking ridiculous, but here, here we are with this story. So, uh, for, well, first, I want to say, Henry Bingham, man, you, you should reach out to Xfinity. You tell stories about as good as Xfinity does, you know, like, as realistic as they do. Absolute nonsense. So, this guy, I kid you not, he is claiming that he worked too hard at his job. He got in trouble at his job because he worked too hard at his job. He was too good at it that he made everyone else look bad and thus got in trouble with his boss because he was too good. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Are you off your fucking marbles, man? What is going on? So yeah, he, he talks about how good he was at this job, which, by the way, he said was just moving fucking boxes into trucks. Bingo man, I moved boxes into trucks for for a fucking fireworks stand and I did that for zero pay, man. Like are are you really talking about oh man I put in the hard labor, I moved boxes around. Henry Bingo man, you were delusional. You might be the most ridiculous person I've ever seen on this platform before oh my god and here he is talking about how he was too good to the point where he made everyone else look bad and for the summer he took off you know the whole company fucking tanked because he wasn't there to carry everything Henry like what what is your what is wrong with you man Henry do do you do you jerk off to your own selfies, bro? Like, what do you... Oh my god. This man is so full of himself. It is absolutely ridiculous. Alright, and here we are checking out the website. HenryBingaMan.com what a, what, a, what a wonderful website this is. Uh, let's see what's going on here. We have the man himself, Henry Bingaman. Uh... Get my free guide to living a life of freedom. Uh, 
two million plus customers acquired you know yeah here's all his stats you know if you if you were really he really likes to shove numbers in your face he really likes you to know his stats and all that stuff you know and that's clearly you know because he's just so confident in himself he's just so so capable he, he's so great you know he just has to remind you every two seconds of his stats and how capable he is you know i mean i mean he he was literally carrying that entire company on his back you know just moving boxes into trucks and you know and he was doing it so good he actually got in trouble he, he just made everyone look bad he was just so good henry binga man you know he he might be just god's gift to man you know he might be the best so here we are um if you want to learn about Henry, here here we are. Some stuff, of course, of course. Uh, it's a scary time for people who value freedom. Jesus Christ, Henry. Uh, yeah, so here we are with, once again, the corruption stuff. Oh, yeah, schools, media, medical, pharmaceuticals, big banks, corporations, government, they're all corrupt, they're all evil. I mean, maybe some of them are, but really, medical, big banks, I mean... I mean, I know, like, banks do, do be, you know, taking the money and tax and stuff and all that. But uh, you know that let's let's calm it with the anti-Semitism there, bud. Let's let's take it easy there, pal. And yeah, pharmaceuticals. Okay, no pharmaceuticals are not corrupt. If you think they are, you're you're a fucking idiot. Please please stop listening to Alex Jones. He's a complete moron and has even admitted to lying about everything. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Uh, so here we are, Henry Bingaman, you know, he's just your average guy, you know, with a, with a fucking iced out watch on his wrist, um, you know. It's interesting that that's in the shot, though, you know, probably not intentional, you know, he just wears expensive watches sometimes, you know. He's just chilling there with his dog, he, you know, and oh, did he accidentally sli slip some ice in there, you know, oh, oh, my bad, my bad, didn't mean to flex on you so hard there, it was totally by accident, you know. Yeah. I mean, clearly, you just, yeah, and here we are, you know, once again, click on this to learn, click on this to learn. He, he really wants you to click on his stuff to, to, to use his knowledge, you know. If, if you want to live a life of actual success, you got to listen to this guy. So here are some quotes that famous people have said about Henry Bingaman himself. Okay, so, um, so this one had him on speed dial, had him on speed dial for everything who said that, um, uh, Marcella Allison. Uh, he mentioned her before yeah, he mentioned her before when talking about a uh, business partner he was working with that made a lot of money with. So yeah, you guys are basically co-people. You work together on everything. Like, yeah, of course you're going to suck his dick. I mean, why? It's... Of course you would say that, yeah. Henry Bingaman is a is that rare combination of someone who is doing the work of creating marketing campaigns at the highest level, earning millions with clients, and is incredibly good at teaching how he does it. He's incredibly good at, at teaching stuff, you know, he was so good that he uh, made a ton of mistakes in that video, and um... Failed to understand American history, uh, talked a bunch of nonsense. I mean, damn, he was just so good at teaching that stuff that he made countless mistakes. And I mean, he's just so good at teaching stuff, you know, he only had to shove uh, his stats, his quote, his success in your face several times, you know. He only had to do it several times, you know. He was just that good, that good. 
Henry is one of those rare birds who can both write great copy at the highest, most competent level and show you how he does it. I mean, I can't help but notice that that quote is very similar to this other quote. They're both like, wow, Henry is one of those rare people. He's so rare and he's the best. He's not just great at what he does, but also great at showing you how to do it. These are very similar quotes. It's almost like people got paid off to say the same thing or he told them what to say or something. Huh. You know, I mean, if these are two individual people, two individual free thinkers, you, it's very odd that they would randomly say the same quote. Especially considering said quote is false. Huh. It's almost like they got told to do that or something. How odd is that? Here's a Steve Harvey. First person I actually know of all these people, Steve Harvey. Um... One of the best damn writers I've ever worked with. And, uh, you know what? I actually like this quote. I think Steve Harvey is correct in this quote. This is the one quote that is correct, because, uh, as you can see here, Steve Harvey is a comedian, and I'm pretty sure, um, Mr. Bingaman here probably just wrote him... A book on like how to be successful in money he just gave a book you know a, a description of how to how to succeed how to be Henry being a man and be the best man in the world and Steve Harvey read it and thought it was just the most comedic hilarious shit he's ever seen and didn't realize that Henry being a man was trying to be serious that's right you know uh, Henry being a man you you should join the circus you're the funniest clown I've ever seen in my life Maybe maybe write that on your on your website. That would be a fun quote. Like Trevor Sony, Henry Bingaman, you are the funniest clown I've ever seen. Uh, Henry Bingaman is on the short list of copywriters I would never dream of going up against. He really is that good. Clayton make peace. I mean, just look at this guy's face. I mean, this dude. This dude's getting old. I don't think he can really process things anymore. I'm a huge admirer of Henry's work. So much so that I asked him to be a guest instructor on one of my Copy Cub training calls. My Copy Cubs and I were blown away by the information Henry shared. I myself took four pages of notes. Here it is, the four pages of notes. If you ever have an opportunity to learn from this man, grab it. I mean, Henry being a man is just so good at his stuff. He just has to shove these, he, he only had to shove these, you know, click here to learn things several times. You know, he's just that good. With his knowledge that he he only has to shove it in your face sometimes, you know. My name is Henry Bingaman. Many heavyweights in the direct response industry consider me an A-list marketer and copywriter. I mean, he's so good at marketing, he just shoves stuff in your face. Which, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you are good at marketing in that case. And I mean, he's so good at marketing, I don't even know who the fuck this guy is. I just found him because of one video on YouTube. That's how good he is at marketing. Do you guys know who this guy is? No, you fucking don't. And he's that good at marketing that he's so good at marketing and stuff that nobody even knows who he is. So good. Oh, and here's here's his here's his channel. Go look at his channel, and here's his book, which um, which I didn't show it on here. I unfortunately, yeah, I I clicked out of the ad before I started recording. But um, if you go on his channel, you guys can do it yourselves. If you go on uh his website here, if you go on his website, uh, if you're there for a bit, there will be a pop up of this book. There will be an ad, it'll pop up and be like, buy the book now, or click the X in the corner. 
Here, here's my book. Buy it. Yep. And just look at this book created by Practical Liberty founder Henry Bingaman. The founder himself, Henry Bingaman. Practical Liberty is a channel on YouTube that only has 300 subscribers, and you're like, hey, he's the founder of it. Hey, Henry Bingaman, I'm the founder of N Sebastian 2 Am I am I amazing? Am I the greatest person in the world too? I'll start putting that on my resume now. Founder of N Sebastian 2 Yep. That's the man himself, Henry Bingaman. Well, that was something. Okay. So, yeah, though that's my thoughts on this complete jackass. Like I said, this dude's composure is as gone as his hair. Dude is nuts, has no idea what he's talking about, and is clearly one of the most insecure idiots out there who has to keep shoving numbers, keep shoving fake stories in your face, and keep trying desperately again and again and again to try and convince you that he is anyone worth anything. He's also a crypto bro, so he's apparently somehow... A genius businessman who knows how to do everything, and yet he thinks crypto is a good thing to invest in. No, clearly, we can all see through your bullshit, Henry Bingaman. You're just a fucking idiot who is trying to present himself as not a fucking idiot. I, I apologize to all the reviewers I called out in that one video when I made the analogy of the kid who didn't do his homework and is like, oh yeah, you can see the chart here and whatnot. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's not the reviewers. I take that back. Those aren't the reviewers. That's Henry Bingaman. That's Henry Bingaman doing the fucking chart bit. Oh, you, you can you can see the, the, the numbers. Uh, they, they changed in the... Uh, that... that means a lot, Miss Williams. It, it means a lot because the numbers... My God. So yeah, uh, everyone watching this, this has been a mean, aggressive video and whatnot, but I want to end, end it with this. If you ever see any of these jackasses, you ever see any of these channels, any of these websites, any of this stuff saying like, hey, I know the key to success, I know this, follow me, follow me, buy my book, do this, blah blah blah, and you will be successful. Never fucking listen to them, never buy any of that, never buy into any of it, it's all bullshit, it's all stupid, every single one of them is a fucking idiot. Please never buy into it, please don't do it, oh this crypto bit will work out, no, 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 it's stupid, don't listen to it, they're all idiots. Thank you. Well, that was something. Um, yeah. Thanks for letting me uh, get my anger out there. Uh, Binga Man, if you ever see this video, I kind of want to YouTube box you. And, uh, I mean, you're, you're the business guy. You'd be cool with, like, setting up a boxing, uh, event and whatnot, right? And, I mean, you got millions of fans and whatnot, you know, business deal. You, you, I'm sure it would be a big hit. YouTube boxing? Huh? You, me? Make it happen, Mr. Binga Man. Make it happen. So, yeah. I'll, I'll leave you guys with that. Make McChicken's not war. Thanks for watching.